record the lesson, okay? Uh, whenever you ask me uh, to uh, have access to the videos, uh, I give you the access uh, to uh, all the directory with all the videos of this class and the other one. Uh, you should have only viewer privilege, so you can you can have access to all, and you have just to ask access once, because let me know if uh, it doesn't work or similar. Okay, let me share my screen, and we can start. Okay. Please, to all the other that are just uh, recently connected, I would like you to turn on your video cameras. Okay, to, uh, today we are going to uh, continue our discussion about kinematics. Uh, Tuesday afternoon, we will usually have uh, a practice class, but uh, just we just started, so we should first have some, uh, you know, topic to discuss about, and then we will start. Uh, doing some exercise together. So we are we will continue our discussion about kinematics and let us see a little bit what we did uh, last time. Kinematics is the topic of robotics that study the relationship between the joint position and the end effect or position orientation. Today, today we will see a little bit what is direct kinematics and conceptually, you will notice that uh, it is a very simple concept. But before doing that, as I told you, we need three mathematical tools that most of you uh, didn't study in their uh, career, in their background. The concept of rotation matrix, then the concept of orientation representation, and we will see today, today the homogeneous transformation. Then we will see today what, what is a direct kinematics and the difference between joint and operational spaces. Really quickly, let us refresh a little bit the concept of rotation matrix. Uh, we saw that uh, if we write the unit vector of a frame with respect to the other frame, so in the coordinates of another frame, and we write dot, those coordinates as column vector of a three by three matrix, we obtain an object that we define as rotation matrix that uh, exhibits some uh, properties. In particular, we saw that this matrix is a, a useful tool in order to make three different operations. The first one, it is a uh, tool to rotate one frame with respect to the other. And we saw it uh, first uh, by looking at the uh, elementary rotation. Okay, So the first interpretation or the first use of this uh, three by three matrix is uh, a rotation operator from one frame to the other. Then we saw that uh, uh, we can use the rotation matrix in order to change the representation of the same point from one frame to another. And in particular here, we see that vector P in, in a frame uh, sigma is equal to rotation matrix multiplied by P prime in the frame prime. If we, we have the rotation matrix representing the rotation between the two frames. And finally, and so this is the second interpretation. And finally, we notice that a third interpretation of the rotation matrix is that it allows us to rotate a vector within the same frame. So we apply this operator, so we, we pre-multiplying a vector by this uh, rotation matrix, and we obtain the same vector rotated by an amount, so by a certain angle and a direction that are embedded in the rotation matrix. So this is something that uh, we already saw last time, and this is a recap of uh, the three 
uh, operations or uh, the tree interpretation that we can give to the rotation matrix. Then we saw that we can uh, obtain composition of rotation matrices. So we can uh, accumulate rotations with a different uh, interpretation. So this is something that we saw. And we also notice uh, a notation detail that we must, uh, we must know. Uh, it, it changes with respect to the, 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 the textbook that you use because it's simply a convention that we denote with the matrix R, with um, a subscript I and uh, upscript J, that is a rotation uh, of I with respect to J, okay? And we know by the properties of uh, the rotation matrices that the inverse of a rotation can be very simply computed as its transpose. We know now that uh, we can implement the current frame rotation in this very simple way. Okay, so the rotation from two to zero is given by two partial rotations from zero to one, from one to zero here, from two to one, in current frame. So th this second is to be interpreted with respect to frame one. And this is something that we are going to use today, okay? Then we saw also the other interpretation with the, if we interpret the rotation with respect to the original frame, so in a fixed frame rotation. After that, we saw three different kind of orientation representation. Uh, other three, because the rotation is already a, a uh, orientation representation. In particular, we saw the Euler angles, axis angle, and quaternions. We are not going, of course, to repeat the same concept. Let me skip directly here with the page of the recap of pro and cons of the various orientation representation. Uh, the first column here is the intuition, and we verified that uh, rotation matrix, Euler angles, axis angle are rather intuitive, quaternions are not. Then uh, the facility, uh, uh, opportunity to put the, this orientation representation in chain, and so to use it uh, in order to uh, represent or compute successive uh, uh, rotations, and we see that ro matrix rotation is okay, quaternions are okay, Euler angles and axis angle, so and so. Memories, let me skip. The difference is factor three, that is not so much. Numerically, the uh, tool that is really suitable for numerical implementation is the quaternion, okay? And uh, uh, for example, OpenGL uh, documentation says, use the quaternions internally in your code. And then when you need to uh, have an interface with an operator, do not use the quaternion because it is not intuitive, but something else. Representation singularities, uh, Euler angles and axis angles are affected by representation singularities, rotation matrices and quaternions are not. And then this last column that will be a little bit uh, mystery until uh, we study differential kinematics. Okay, now let us start with the today's uh, topic and start with the third mathematical tool that we need before moving on the homogeneous transformation, the direct kinematics, and it is the homogeneous transformation, okay? Okay, so first of all, let's see the, 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 this uh, vector sum, okay? And this is the, the, the plot. Let me see if uh, we can use just the board in order to first test of, of the board.
Okay, so if I have, uh, I mean, basically two vectors, I can sum the two vectors and obtain the third one. Okay, this is a really basic geometry. Uh, graphically, it is very easy to represent the sum of two vectors because you can verify that it is uh, vector one, vector two, and in order to obtain the sum of the two vectors, you just need to connect uh, the origin of vector one to the edge of vector two. And this is the sum of the two vectors graphically, okay? So let us see here the operation that we are doing. Uh, this is a, a point P. We have a, a point P and two reference frames. One reference frame denoted with the subscript zero and one reference frame denoted with the subscript one. This point P can be represented in frame zero with a vector P. Okay, and here the upscript is at zero in order to uh, clarify that it is represented in frame zero. Now, this is equal to, well, simply the sum of this vector here, this is the vector connecting the original frame one to the original frame Z, zero expressed in frame zero. And this is why the notation is this one, okay? Plus this vector. Now, I know the coordinates of this vector in frame one. And this is the reason why here is written P with the upper scale one. In order to sum to two vectors expressed in frame zero, I first need to rotate it in frame zero. And this is the uh, operation that I have to do is one of the three uh, interpretation of the uh, rotation matrix. So just one second that I switch to the to the board. Okay, cazzo, ogni volta c'è un problema. Ah, si è proprio bloccato tutto. No, no, proprio tutto quanto si è bloccato. Nessuno mi ha mandato un sms, no? Non so se questo significa che ho ancora anche le due. Eh, esatto. Professore, la... voi mi no, sentite? No, allora, scusate. Sì, vediamo e sentiamo. Allora, scusate per il linguaggio, io diciamo non ho più il controllo del... Cioè, sorry, for, sorry, but uh, my desktop just froze. Ok, maybe now I'm... something is happening. Let, let, let me wait just a few seconds in order to, to see if uh, it's something that... <ride> Cosa vedete adesso voi? Le slide. E adesso? Matlab. Ok, quindi you are correctly seeing what's going on in my uh, screen, but I don't have control of my screen. Yes, now yes. Ok, so uh, where were we? Here. So, sorry for the for the language, but it was in Italian. So. Okay, so this is uh, the, the relationship that uh, we have here in our, in our uh, draw here. And uh, let us compute the inverse transformation. In order to compute uh, what I would like to have, it is P written with respect to reference one. So what I have to do is pre-multiplying by the inverse of 
R10, okay? And I have to clarify that this, this is a, a left multiplication because we know that with matrices, multiplication is not commutative. First of all, I noticed that uh, the inverse, I remember that the inverse of a rotation matrix is its transpose. So for example, I can here, if I want, I can simply write transpose, okay? Or I, can al I could also write uh, with the same symbology. So A01 is, e is equal A01 transpose or R10. Those are equivalent to A. And so I have here R1 transpose, A0 is equal, uh, sorry, I have to pre-multiply, of course, this. But this is the identity matrix. And now I can say that P1 is equal Okay. This is simply the simply passages in order to have P1 written with respect to P in frame zero, and of course, the distance between the two origin. And this is exactly what is written here. The only difference is that here, the notation, it is a little bit lighter. The notation of the uh, inverse rotation is written just by switching the subscript and the upper script, okay? So this is very simply a, a, a way to, to represent one point uh, with respect in a frame uh, in a, with respect to another frame, if I know the translation between those two frames. Okay, but now what I would like to do is to have a compact way to represent this operation. Actually, let us come back in this page. Uh, this is a roto translation between frames, okay? Th those two frames are rotated and translated one with respect to the other. And I want to, to see what is the way to write uh, the coordinates of this point P in any of the two frames. This is the operation from the mathematical perspective, but I want a compact way to, uh, to write it down. Now, let us define a homogeneous vector. I mean, this vector is simply the three-dimensional point P plus, plus with a fourth element that is always the constant one, so the number one, okay? If I write P and I call it P tilde in this way, I can define a, a new matrix that I, I define as homogeneous transformation matrix. It is a matrix uh, four by four. Let me uh, a little bit rewrite this matrix in a more uh, convenient way with using the board. And just erasing a little bit the previous one, so just one second that I okay. So, in order, in order to understand. This is a matrix uh, four by four, okay? So now, this is uh, a vector of uh, three zero elements. So let me rewrite it in that way.
okay? This is the number one, a scalar, and this is the vector of uh, the coordinates, is a vector three by one, of the coordinates of the fra original frame one with respect to the original frame zero expressed in frame zero. And now we know that this is the rotation matrix that is three by three, okay? So this is one by three, this is one by one. If I introduce this kind of strange object where we can appreciate the fact that the last, the last row is constant, zero, 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 one, is always constant, okay? So what is the, the utility of doing in introducing such a matrix? Well, the utility is here. I have a compact way to represent the roto translation of one point with respect to another. So P tilde expressed in frame one can be written with respect to frame zero by pre-multiplying the vector by this homogeneous transformation matrix. And what is very attractive is that uh, from the notation, this is exactly the same as for a rotation, okay? The only aspect that we need to pay attention to is that the inverse transformation, if I want to do the inverse transformation, well, very easily I can notice that uh, the inverse matrix is different. Uh, you just make the, the computation and uh, you notice that this is, uh, I mean, this is the case, okay? We already did it earlier. It means that uh, the, 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 the um, similarity with the iteration matrix is not complete because we just notice very easily that the inverse of the homogeneous transformation matrix is different from its transpose. But another really appealing property is that the composition of transformation is really close, is really similar, and from the notation aspect is the same as the composition of the rotations operator, okay? So this tool is useful in order to have a compact way to roto-translate, so to uh, represent a point from one frame to another. And as I said you, we have, uh, um, the robots for us will be a series of links connected one each other. In particular, for us, beyond the, the definitions of robots that we saw in the first lesson, now for us, a robot will be a set of links connected via joints. Now, links, is rigid bodies connected via joints. The joints are the degrees of freedom between the rigid bodies. Now, I'm sorry, this is uh, in Italian because it uh, uh, draw from the Italian book, but this is rotational and this means prismatic. Rotational is uh, a degree of freedom around one axis. And this is the same joint as seen from three different perspectives. You will see this image all along the, uh, the slides, from the top view and two lateral view. The prismatic joint is a, trans is a, a linear motor, so it's a translation. And in this case too, those are three different ways to graphically represent the prismatic joint. Now, the direct kinematics is the computation of the roto translation from the base to the end effect. It, it, it has some differences between an open, an open serial chain. Open serial chain means I have a rigid body, one joint, one joint, one joint, and the end effector is 
not connected to any of the previous joint. The, close, the closed serial chain, that is something that we will not study in this course, okay? Uh, is when you have uh, some degrees of freedom that one, that a certain point of the structure connects again, and then you can have also a serial chain in the end. Some robots exhibit a closed serial chain uh, for some uh, uh, mechanical reasons, okay? But we will not study closed serial chain in this class. The degree of mobility uh, of the robot is typically associated with, I mean, an articulation or a joint variable. For us, every joint will represent one degree of freedom. Okay, so now, what is it, this direct kinematics? The direct kinematics is the operation to compute the end factor. Now, the term used here is pose or configuration or position orientation is the same as function of the joint variables. Here, this, uh, uh, this uh, plot represents what is a direct kinematics. I do know the joint positions, all those uh, you know, green symbols means, okay, checked. I know the joint positions because I have sensors to, okay, to, to measure it. I do want to know position orientation of the end effect. As you can imagine, this is a, a systematic op operation. The intuition already tells us that it's not difficult conceptually, because I just have to compose all this rotor translation from one link to the other. But we will do it right now uh, systematically. So conceptually, it's very easy. I need to first have a base frame. A base frame is a frame put in somewhere fixed, okay? So, for example, on the, on the ground, on the table. And I, want, and I have to put a tool frame attached to the end effector, so to the last rigid body of the robot. The tool frame is characterized by three different unit vector with a three different name, okay? Uh, the, the most important is the A here because it's the approaching unit vector. If you look here, this unit vector has the subscript E, that is end effector, and the superscript, the upper script B, base. So it is, I want to compute it with respect to the base frame. So what I do need is to compute this vector position and those three unit vectors. This is the direct kinematics. Now I have the mathematical tools that allow me to compute it. So I do want this homogeneous transformation matrix. It is written in this way as four columns. This is, uh, let me start with, uh, with the A, so the third column. This is the approach unit vector. So the approach unit vector is this one. Is the, is the one going out from the, uh, from the end effect. So Z, let me see. Then I have the sliding and the normal. The sliding is uh, more or less lateral and the normal is the the one that I need in order to complete the uh, right-hand frame. Uh, it is rather arbitrary where to put the end effector frame because it's something that is related to the application. And of course, I need the, the position of the end effector with respect to the base. The direct kinematics is simply a function that provides the homogeneous matrix, okay? The input are the joint position. So now let us uh, have a, a deeper look at those variables. 
if I define Q as the vector of joint variables, so every joint has a certain position, we will see a little bit better today what does it mean, the position and orientation the end effector is function of the joint. From the computer aspect, from the programming aspect, uh, I want to, to write a function given as input Q and as output a matrix 4x4. This is the name of the function that uh, you will develop during the exercise that I will give you in the end of uh, the exercise on direct kinematics in case you did not uh, complete your assignment, okay? So this is a totally arbitrary number that I gave to my, I gave, sorry, I gave to my uh, function. Okay, I just have a look if you all are here. Yes, okay. Now, let us just have a, a look of an example that comes from the sky. We, we, we will compute uh, this homogeneous transformation matrix, but right now uh, we don't have yet the way to do it. So let me just have a look at what we are looking for. This is a planar tooling robot. This is a rotational joint, and this is another rotational joint as seen from the top. The position of this joint in this case is theta one. The position of this joint with respect to the previous one is theta two. The length of the first link is A1, the length of the second link is A2. This is the approach vector. This is the sliding vector. And now we, we do have a third vector that is, in this case, is coming out from the screen. The same as x, y, and z is coming how, out from the screen. We will uh, learn how to compute this homogeneous transformation matrix. Now, let us just uh, have a look at the, already the results. And this is the results. Uh, can we just provide a comment? First of all, notation, notation that will be true for all the codes. S and C with a subscript is a compact way to represent the sinus of the sum of two vectors. Now, let, let just me pose a question to you. What does it mean here that you have 0, 0, 1? in those three positions, zero, zero, one. I am, while, I mean, I'm, I'm waiting for someone of you to, to reply, I just prepare a draw for the answer. I'm uh, uh, drawing the planar tooling robot uh, with a 3D view, okay? Here I have uh, the first link, this is the second link. Now, this is the approach vector. Then I have the sliding one. The sliding one is written with respect to here. 
So S and uh, the normal one. What I want to know is how to compute this uh, homogeneous transformation matrix. And uh, I would like to, to see if you understand why here I have constant 0, 0, 1. Let me try with you to understand why this is 0, 0, 1. The normal vector here is going out from the screen, as I told you. Okay, so in this 3D view, this normal vector here is parallel to Z. Okay, so let us receive what is a, trans a homogeneous transformation matrix. Uh, what is the letter used here? Sorry, T. Okay, T E B is given. I have uh, the rotation from he to B, 0, 0, 0. Then I have a 1. And then here I have the coordinates of uh, this point here with respect to the origin of frame B. OK? I do not know the coordinates because those are function, of course, of, of the joint. So X and Y will change according to the joint. For example, if I move this joint here, of course, I change X and Y. But the robot uh, stay on the plane and thus the Z coordinates will always be zero. Let us have a look at this rotation, R, E, B. I rewrite here, R, E, B, just cancel here. And so this is N, S, A, so X, Y, and Z, the three unit vector of the end effect are expressed with respect to the base frame. So now, I would like to know from you, what are the coordinates of the normal vector given the draw that I made? What are the coordinates of this guy, of this guy here expressed in the base frame given the fact that this, this robot can move only on this plane. Any idea? Ah, sorry, you're writing on the, on the someone is, is writing on the, on the, on the chat. Yes, zero, zero, 001. So this is the interpretation, okay? The coordinates of this one are 0, 0, 1. All the other elements, I, I do know that here I have a 0 and 0, for example, because the other two, uh, the approach and the sliding vector are on a plane, so they do not have the component of Z. They, they have a null component on Z, okay? So now, I don't have yet the way to understand the element, those six elements, but I do understand all the others, zero and one. Okay, so this is a way to try to understand the, the homogeneous transformation. Our objective now is to build this, uh, succession of uh, multiplications. Uh, let us have a look at this uh, plot. Here I have uh, a uh, frame with uh, uh, subscript 0, 1, i minus 1, i means generic 1, until n. n is the number of joints. So I have one frame attached to each of the links of our robot. 
if I look at my arm, zero could be here on the shoulder, then one attached to this part, then two, then three, and four, five, six, and so on, okay? Look, in addition to those, so here is very small, it's written T, subscript N, upperscript zero. I do have uh, other two frames that I will describe later. Let us have a look uh, at these multiplications of homogeneous transformation matrix. I need to compute the homogeneous from zero to n. And this is the multiplication of the homogeneous from zero to one as a function of Q1. This is conceptually important. Zero, one is attached to the first link after the first degree of freedom. It means that after the first joint, is it only function of one joint? This is why it's K1. This other guy here, from one to two, is only function of K2. If I change K1, the roto translation, so the homogeneous transformation matrix between one and two is not changed. So each homogeneous transformation between connecting two consecutive frames is only function of one degree of freedom. This function, as a rule, is function of the joint positions that will also define as robot configuration. And here, the concept that I just said is written. Then, I do need the two constant transformations from zero to the base of the robot and from the last joint to the end effect. Uh, why so? Well, uh, we will say later on, but uh, the end effector of a robot usually have uh, different tools uh, attached depending on the operations we are implementing. And in base of the tool attached, I may want to, to change the position of the end effector. So I have uh, a constant roto translation in the last link. And the same for the, the very first. The very first B is the base of the robot. I may have a different robot uh, within a table, and uh, they all need to refer to a common uh, frame B, base. So zero is the origin of the robot, sorry, and B is the base frame, okay? So now, now what we are doing in the next uh, uh, few minutes is a little bit boring. Uh, the slides contains the slides contains uh, all the details, but I'm not going to go into the details. I would like uh, you to understand the concept. We will use uh, those concepts. Uh, as a tool in order to compute the direct kinematics, uh, but without entering into the small uh, aspect of what we are doing. Okay, so the slides are a little bit more complex uh, than what I'm going to, to, to do. This is what I would like to you to, to notice. Okay, so I introduce a convention in order to represent the roto translation between two links, I need to decide a way to do it. There are uh, infinite ways to do it. I would like to, to have one common way to put the frames on the link. So let us have a look only at the main concept of this one here. I have frame that is denoted as I minus one. This, this is frame I. I would like to be able to have a set of rules to, to decide how to attach those frames on the links in order to have a systematic way to compute the homogeneous transformation matrix. Now, next page is the list of those rules that we are not going to study into the details. 
we I just want to 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 focus the attention on a par couple of points. The first is look, I have uh, the one frame here, another frame here, and an intermediate one. I will uh, decompose the homogeneous transformation in two homogeneous transformations. Some of them will, will be function of the link length, for example, and some other on the joint position. The list of rules in order to decide the frames is this one. Again, not going to the detail. We first choice the, the Z axis, then we choose the origin of the frame, then we select uh, X and then Y. Okay, those are rules. And there are some exceptions that we are not going to do. Okay, those are the rules. So now, those rules gives us some so-called parameters. The, the, the intuition of those two researchers is that whatever structure your robot is, whatever is, uh, I mean, the, the, the appearance of your robot, as long as it is a serial chain of links, we can represent it with the four parameters for each link. Okay, so this is uh, the main tuition of uh, those two guys. I don't care what is the appearance of the robot. It is a serial chain of rigid links. Yes, by assumption, we are studying only this kind of object. Very well. It means that I only need four parameters to represent two successive homogeneous transformation methods. Okay. Well, those four parameters are here. And uh, of course, uh, we didn't go into the detail of, uh, of um, uh, the, the, the rules. So let us a little bit just comment on those four. I have uh, two length and two angles. A1 is a length. The, uh, uh, sorry, no one, I. AI is a length. D i is a length, alpha i is an angle, and theta i is an angle. Alpha and a are always constant and depend, of course, on the robot, but they're always constant. Then, for a rotational joint, the variable is theta. For a prismatic joint, the variable is d, and the other is constant. This is very, very useful. Because now, we, if we apply the rules, we do have an homogeneous transformation matrix that has been composed by two uh, homogeneous, but we don't care. We, we care about this one. We do know how to compute the rotor translation that relates frame I minus one and frame I. And this is the symbolic expression. It is a function only of theta, alpha, A and D for this specific joint. I do have the expression. I just have to understand what are the value of A, D and alpha for a rotational joint. And theta will be the variable that I can read from sensors. So this is a systematic way. Next slide is also a little bit scary because it's just a list of operations to do. I, I don't remember by heart the convention. If you give me a new robotic structure, I just put on a side the, the rules on the other the draw of the robot, 
and I compute the parameters. So it's not something that uh, is very conceptual, and you don't need to remember uh, by heart. Actually, in this in this course, you don't need to to really to go, to go into the details. Okay, this is the operation, the operative procedure. Rules. And now we are going to to have a, a small break and then to have a look at the kinematics of uh, some structures. Uh, you will see that it's very systematic and it's very easy. Uh, feel free to, to interrupt even if uh, remotely is not really easy. But uh, do you have any question of what uh, we have seen up to now? Okay. Uh, I um, I think it's better if uh, I just uh, interrupt uh, the recording without uh, closing the the meet room. Okay. And uh, now is um, five to three. Let me meet uh, at uh, uh, five past three. Okay. Ten minutes. Okay. Okay.